Welcome to the From Concealment Podcast, the show for firearm enthusiasts who like to shoot, train, carry, and compete. Get ready for some shooting and sight, firearm and accessory reviews, and of course, insight on concealed carry. And now, broadcasting from behind enemy lines in the From Concealment studio, it's Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Hey, Freedom Nation, this is Pete Mitchell. And I'm Dan Sams. And you are listening to the From Concealment Podcast, which is being brought to you by FastOC.com. I tell you, if you are in the Southern California area, uh, I actually was looking at their stats the other day. I mean, we've got people coming all the way up from San Diego, uh, the Inland Empire, LA, coming to their training courses. I mean, so... Yeah, you can come from anywhere in Southern California. Check out FastOC.com. They've got all kinds of phenomenal training courses, everything from handgun, rifle, urban rifle, uh, shotgun. Uh, Of course, the thing that I always attend are their handgun challenges, which are just lots of fun, lots of shooting, lots of running, all the good stuff, the stuff that everybody wants. I mean... Metal mm-hmm. poppers in an indoor range? Come on. Yes. can only do that with a handgun challenge. They don't let you do that any other time. So oh, man. check out fastoc.com because they've got all the good stuff. So, uh, Dan, what's been going on with you, man? Oh, man. You know what? I got some shooting in this weekend, and it made me so happy. Um, so my favorite thing is still to get out there with the uh, 22 LR. Just my It's my Ruger 1022. I got plenty of other guns. I got better guns. I got you know, custom built AR, all that kind of stuff. But there's something about just getting out with that 22. And so snowing out here is beautiful. I took a walk in the snow through the woods. It was wonderful. I get back, I'm walking back down the range and I'm like, why am I not shooting? I'm taking a walk. I should be shooting also. And so I um, went in and got my guns. I've got these little, uh, how about two and a half by three and a half inch uh, steel plates that I shoot at. And I've got them at a hundred yards and so I'm spinning that thing all day long. I actually zoomed out my scope on the thing all the way to, I think the lowest magnification on it is three, still spinning it like crazy. And I'm like, this is awesome. And so then I'm like, I'm going to shoot at the 150 yard target. I have the same target at 150 yards about this. And I'm like, I'll be the man if I can you know, hit that thing. I'm not really paying attention to my ballistics. And so I can't hit Jack with the 22 at 150 yards because right. after... After that 100, 100 yard, whatever, there's just something going on with the sound barrier. There's all kinds of things. I'm trying to figure out what my drop is going to be like and all that. And somebody's like, dude, it just turns into a tumbling mess <laughs> past 100 yards. Like, you, you, just, you just don't even worry about it, man. <laughs> so I guess that makes me feel better. But I had just so much fun shooting. It was just great. It's just a good, good day of shooting on that was I actually want to get one of those. I haven't picked one of those up yet. Oh, it's just so much fun. When well, and mine, I don't, I don't have a suppressor or anything on it, but I have this great muzzle brake that throws all the sound out. It stays really level, which it would anyway. But it's, um, and I, I don't have to wear hearing protection. It's so quiet. Um, it's just beautiful. Looks cool. Everything about that thing is awesome. Nice. Um, I just love it. Yeah, it's it's funny how I will, I'll get out all my guns. I'll be shooting for a while, and that's always where I end. It's just shooting that thing. It's just, it's like peaceful. Yeah. Um, it's kind of awesome. And no, no question. It's fun to make something go really loud, make bangs, whole kind of thing like that. Um, but there's also something about like, man, I'm just relaxed. Nothing's killing my shoulder right now. It's just, you know, it's just plinking. And I love it. So it was a good day. Happy about that. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I dig it, man. I dig yeah, it. How, how about you? You know, I haven't been to the range in what feels like forever. Uh, every yeah. time there's a competition... Uh, handgun challenge or training class something's up you know my wife was sick oh, uh, man. the kids were crazy I was gone and then I come back and she's like don't you dare go out again tonight <laughs> 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 oh man I feel like I just I, I need to go shoot something yes. and uh, so by the way brand new news for us here in Orange County California so you know, we know that that California is spelled with a K, right? We all know it's <laughs> communist California here. And uh, <clears throat> so I had to share this with you, Dan, because this is this is actually big news for us here in Orange County, California. Orange County is one of the only state or uh, counties that issues concealed carry weapons permits. 
which is completely unconstitutional that they don't, other counties don't issue them. It's technically unconstitutional that they even make you get a permit. I mean, exactly. Technically that's, that's unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know, what are you going to do? Unfortunately, we're not ready yet as a nation to go fight over uh, the infringement that, that we allow them to do. So you just kind of got to deal with this. So here in Orange County, we have this publication that gives us all of the rules for our concealed carry weapons. And most of the time, uh, you can understand the rules. Yeah. As an example, one of the rules has basically been you can't have anything modified on your firearm. It's got to be stock. And anybody who shoots a Glock knows stock Glocks suck. <laughs> I, mean, I love my Glocks. It is without a doubt my favorite uh, brand of firearm. I've got, you know, my 34, 17, 19, 26, 43. Uh, I think those are the, the ones that I've got. Mm-hmm. Um, we can't here in California get uh, the Glock 45 or the Glock 48 or the Glock 19X unless we buy what's called an off-roster gun, which is going to cost us two to three times uh, the yeah. retail price because only cops can buy it. And then they turn around and sell it to us civilians. And that's technically okay for them to do, yeah. uh, but they, they mark it up, right? Because yeah. they figure, Hey, you know, we got special rights and uh, we're going to make a profit here. Yeah. So that's, so that's what happens when somebody is choking the free market by putting undue regula- regulations on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, anyway, they came out and they changed the rule. Now it went through a revision. So the rule, they, they literally, I went and I checked the Orange County CCW website and it is clearly there. And it basically says this, you can have any modification to your firearm that is legal in California. So there are some things that aren't legal. As an example, we can't have threaded barrels in California because yeah. they're afraid that someone's going to get a silencer and throw it on there. I mean, <laughs> that's all I can assume, right? Because why else would you care if they have a threaded barrel? We don't want you to put a silencer on it. Yeah. So technically you can buy threaded barrels in California. You can own threaded barrels in California. You just can't put it into your firearm. <laughs> so, <laughs> in other words, there are guys who have like, you know, here, here it is, Mr. Officer. Uh, that's my threaded barrel, but that's not illegal. It's not in my firearm. So they take it out every time, I guess. Right? Um, if you want to have a compensator on the end of it, technically you got to pin it, which means mm. how's that going to work if, you know, you want to clean your barrel? I mean, mm-hmm. come on, that doesn't work. But yeah. so, I mean, most of the guys who have compensators, they don't pin it. They literally just take their chances that, you know, yeah. they're not going to get caught. Um, yeah. I've actually never heard of anyone getting caught for it, but, uh, I, you know, here in California, I just, I wouldn't press it. I literally yeah. wouldn't press it ever because Californians by and large hate guns and people who like guns. Yeah. So you become that guy the second they find that and they are going to do whatever they can to literally lock you up for as many years as they can get. Yeah. It's just, to me, it's not worth it. I'm not going to put a compensator on the end of it. I'm not porting it. I'm not doing any. I mean, yeah. we could technically have ported barrels. That's not a problem. But anyway, but just to be able to have that modification. So the whole reason I've never put my 34 on my CCW, because we actually have to list it by serial number to have mm-hmm. it on our CCW. And basically, we have to have been qualified on it to prove that we we can shoot that gun responsibly. Yeah. Um. I've never put it on there because I do have some minor adjustments to the trigger and not stock parts. And so yeah. I'm like, all right, I know I can't do that. I also have a massive magwell on it. I mean, <laughs> the joke at the range is Pete, if you miss your reload, there's something wrong with you because it's just like this massive magwell. That's I'm like, really good though. Dude, it is my favorite firearm. Yep. So then originally, it said, uh, but you are limited to 10 round magazines. Here's the problem with that. So here in California, we had a federal judge who uh, recently, you know, his ruling came out, I think it was last year. And he basically said, um, it is not illegal to own 
to possess, to have, or to use standard capacity magazines. Right now, it is technically illegal to buy them or sell them because he stayed his own order. But he even said, if you bought them a week, it was called Freedom Week. So one week, it was like this giant sucking noise across the whole nation as every standard capacity magazine flooded into California. Every website in the nation was sold out. Yeah, uh, Brownells, cool. Midway USA, you name it, cheaper than cheaper than dirt. Everybody yeah. was sold out because California was sucking them up. They estimate that a million magazines were bought <laughs> by it's beautiful gun owners in California, of which I must have bought you know a half a million myself personally. Well, and we were out here, you know, in the in the more free states, saying like, "Hey, man, I'm cool with just not buying for this next little bit of time." So their California brothers can get stocked up. Get stocked and so up. We, people were like, man, when can I get some more bags? And I remember the gun store saying like, well, you know, California. And we're like, salute to them. <laughs> we, will, <laughs> we will bear this sacrifice for our brothers. <laughs> it was so funny, man, because it was literally one week of freedom. So the dude, uh, the judge did the order right before we did <laughs> California courts take Cesar Chavez day off. <laughs> it's California. <laughs> <laughs> so he literally timed it till I think it was like three oh. thirty on Friday, and Caesar Chavez Day was the following Monday, so that was a court <laughs> holiday. So oh we had the whole gosh. weekend, and all the sites were like, uh, uh, "He said it's legal. Uh, can we sell it to our brothers in California?" Uh, he's and so, and then it was like Brownells is like, "Yeah, we're gonna sell it to him." And then you know, once like the big boys did it, every site was that like, was it. "We're not waiting. We're selling." So yeah. then. They finally get in there, an emergency, hey, uh, stop this. You know, there's, there's already sites who are selling to California, right? So they're, they're all bent out of shape. And, um, and so, the, so they have to go to the judge, right? They go to the same judge who issued the, the, his, his ruling, and they ask him to stay his order while they appeal it to the Ninth Circuit. Man. So he takes that. Nothing happens. Next day, nothing happens. Next day, nothing happens. Next day, Thursday comes around. They go to the Ninth Circuit Court and they say, okay, he's not stopping it. We need you guys to stop it. And then he goes, okay, I'm going to stay my own order. However, because people have been buying in good faith because of how I ruled, we're going to give them until five o'clock tomorrow to finish their purchasing and yada, yada, yada. Man. And so then the Ninth Circuit can't hear it because now he's stayed the order like they originally yeah. requested. So we had what we call Freedom Week. So mm-hmm. there are all of us real gun people in California. We have standard capacity magazines, yeah. right? I mean, uh, I was buying drums like they were going out of style. <laughs> I got oh, yeah. you know, my, my 60 round drums. I got my, my 50 round Glock drum, which is hilarious to shoot with. Cause you know, it's a Glock drum. Um, <laughs> you know, I, but, but it was legal. It was legal. Oh, that yeah. week. You could make uh, modifications that week. So, um, all of my Glock 19 mags, I modified to hold uh, an extra four rounds because yep. we could. So, yeah. uh, so anyway, you know, I've been carrying a, uh, a standard capacity magazine, just a, a 15 round in my, mm-hmm. my Glock 19. And so they put on there, you're limited to 10 rounds. Now, here's the thing. People, first of all, everyone in California is stupid. So they would like call Orange County CCW and go, Hey, can we have standard capacity magazines? First of all, why are you asking for permission? Yeah. The federal judge said you get to have own and use those. Yeah. Orange County Sheriff's department does not get to change a federal court's ruling because they don't like it. That's not how it works in our nation. Yeah. So, uh, so they were always telling them, uh, you're limited to 10 rounds. You're limited to 10 rounds. You're limited to 10 rounds. My buddy who renewed his went in and asked when he renewed. And they're like, yeah, you're limited to 10 rounds. And I'm like, first of all, they would have to put that in publication 218 or 219, whatever it was yeah. called. They never put that in there. Yeah. I'm, I'm going by what the federal judge said, not by what some Yahoo in there is saying. Exactly. Because he doesn't get to make rules himself. Like they yeah. published the, the rules for us. So, uh, long story short, they changed it because I think someone brought it up to their attention and said, Hey, you can't limit them to 10 rounds. The federal judge said they get to own, have, and use standard yeah. capacity magazines. They just can't buy or sell them in California, which we can't, but if you got it, you got it. Yeah. 
And so they changed it on their website and it says basically magazine rounds are not, uh, it's there, there's no, there's no, you know, how do they word it? They basically said, if it's legal in California for you to possess it, then you can use it. So they didn't address the number. They just said, it's, is it legal? So in one way they're getting around it, right? Because if you bought a standard capacity magazine today in Arizona and brought it into the state, that would be illegal because now you've imported a a banned uh, magazine, even though that's technically unconstitutional to do that. You got interstate commerce clause that they're violating and everything else, but whatever. Um, That's uh, that's, that's the deal. So it literally says on there, hey, man, you can have your modifications. So my Glock 34 is going on. I got to renew at the end of this month. I'm like, Glock 34 is going on it. Heck yeah, man. And for me, what that does for me, because I mean, who's going to carry their Glock 34, right? I mean, especially with a Magwell the size I got on mine. Yeah. For me, that's the gun that I compete with. But I always have to take like my 19 or my 17 with me because I still need to carry right? Because I can't mm-hmm. carry my 34. That's technically got to be locked up in my trunk because it's not on my CCW. And I can't mm-hmm. put it on my CCW because it's, it's got a, a non-standard trigger and, or a non-stock trigger. So now I'm like, dude, I don't have to take two guns to the match all the time. You know, mm-hmm. one to carry. I can still just take my 34, put my self-defense go. rounds in it, take there, shoot it, you know, put my self-defense rounds back in it and just, you know, carry it home. There you go, man. And so I'm really, really excited about it. And that's all I'm going to do with my 34. I mean, I'm not going to, that's, that's a tough one to, to conceal. Like if you guys saw the yeah. Magwell on it, I mean, yeah. y- you would understand it's, it's a big gun. So. Those, those flared Magwells alone make it harder to conceal. Cause it's just, you know, it's wider, it's pushing out against your body. Like you, that put aside everything else. That's enough reason not to carry it for conceal. But for a situation like that, not yeah. bad, man. Because I not see it when I compete, I wear outside the waistband holster, right? I'm not wearing inside the waistband. Mm-hmm. So it fits fine. And literally, I wear a sweatshirt over. And so there it's concealed. Go. And so I'm good, mm-hmm. right? I'm not going to go to the grocery store on the way home. I mean, they're usually at night, right? I'm just yeah. literally yeah. driving there and driving back. But I want to have my gun on me in case something happens. I mean, first of all, the range that we do most of the, the competitions at I mean, everyone knows they have guns there and ammo, and they've had yeah. many times where they've had uh, attempted break-ins. They've had, um, there was one time where they had a whole group of guys there right as they were closing, and they were going to try and break in and get all of the guns as the, the final employees were leaving. So, I mean, you, like, you want to be carrying a gun when you leave this range. Yeah. Because... First of all, it's in the city of Stanton, which if anybody knows California, that's like the armpit, right? I mean, there's a reason there's an indoor range in Stanton. It's because no other city would take an indoor range. But they're like, oh, uh, uh, revenue? Uh, please, please come to our city, right? There you go. It's, it's not, a good, not a good place. You want to be carrying a firearm when you go there. Yeah. So I'm really personally rather rather excited about these these changes. So Yeah, that's awesome, man. Good yeah. for you guys. It's movement inching toward a little bit more freedom. We'll we'll take what we can get. It, it, considering that it usually goes the other way, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. We'll take what we can get. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Whereas in Virginia, it's going the other way, man. Um, we I don't think we need to do a full update, but man, um, you guys are following the Virginia stuff. There was some more resolutions passed. Um, I don't know if you saw the footage, Pete, where there were, you know, the room was full of pro 2A freedom lovers. And um, they're like when the, you know, these laws are getting passed and they're like, what the heck? And they're like, you know, saying whatever. And then they sent in the, the state police to run them out. Did you see this where video? I didn't they're see like, it, no. There's video of them saying, you can't be here. And they're like, we're, we're at a public location owned by the taxpayers and we're not allowed to be here. And they said, if you stay, you're going to have trespassing charges. And so that got real tricky. Um, and everybody just left, which part of me is like, man, are you going to really fight for freedom? If you know, they ask you to leave from a place you're allowed to be at and you go like, why not just stay, get a trespassing charge, make a headache, whatever, make a point though. I don't know. It was interesting. And I'm like, this sucks. So Still going down in Virginia, man. Stuff is, there's still freedom erosion. And then um, my understanding, I think it's like July 3rd, a couple of days after the laws go into effect, 
supposedly they're planning another march down there and that's going to that's going to be really interesting so we'll see how it goes down but everybody keep your eyes on virginia yeah that's see here's the problem the nra has first of all they, they've abandoned the second amendment oh completely they abandoned california years ago and unfortunately because they abandoned california california is exporting all of yeah. their gun control measures yeah because everyone just basically points to california and goes well california did it and we so now the nra has realized the massive error of their mistakes yeah instead of paying all that money to your board of directors and to wayne why don't you guys actually fight for us yeah. The ones yeah. who gave you the money to begin with, but that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. Um, so like this, there's there in Virginia, it's going to, it's going to immediately go to the courts, right? It's it there 100%. That thing is going to get stayed the laws. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully we'll see the Supreme court actually finally step up. I mean, I hope we're seeing, Everyone ignore Heller. Totally ignore it. I mean, basically, the Supreme Court said, if it's in common use, you can't ban it. So that means our, in California, this crazy, stupid roster we've got, that's unconstitutional. Totally. Um, the uh, bans that we have in, in California on uh, basically what they call assault weapons, which their definition is just completely made up they yeah. literally have no idea what they're talking about so they just like define something as an assault weapon but that's the reason why we have what's called the boat paddle right i'm sure you've seen mm -hmm. the ar-15s that look like a boat paddle i have seen the boat paddles because that's not technically an assault weapon oh, what's man. the difference honestly yeah. i don't need my thumb to pull the trigger so i don't really care if i can't wrap it around it is it yeah. inconvenient absolutely but is it gonna stop me i mean that was the first gun i bought so i learned yeah. how to shoot like that it's okay yeah no biggie um but uh yeah i mean they're they're ignoring heller uh really curious to see what's going to happen with uh the new york case um because that's going to have far-reaching implications the same judge who did the magazine uh uh you know said it was unconstitutional here in California. He's the guy who just happened to get the ammo case. Cause we've talked about this here in California. You cannot buy ammunition without a uh, background check. And they asked him to, to stay that law and he has not done it yet. He's literally been sitting on it from what I hear. He's waiting to see how the Supreme court rules on the New York case. And I'm like, yeah, but that means we've had, at this point, like 100,000 legal uh, citizens of California denied their constitutional right to buy ammunition. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's it absolutely is. ridiculous. I, this is where I'm, I'm really wrestling through just as a, as a Christian who believes Romans 13, I'm supposed to obey governing authorities. But I'm like, man, in our, in our country, the Constitution is supposed to actually be the rule of law. Like that's yeah. supposed to be the authority. And then we have representatives at every level that sure, like I have some submission to, but they are supposed to be submitted to the constitution. So I'm like, there is the idea that they're even close to obeying the constitution related to our firearms is a joke. Right. Um, I mean, it's very clear, shall not be infringed, pl plenty of other stuff there. They like, it's just out the window. They don't obey it. So when I bring up taxes and like, well, why the heck should I pay taxes? And they're like, well, you know, it is part of the constitution, Dan. You keep saying constitution is rule of law. And I'm like, well, yeah, I do. And I got some big questions as to a lot of things related to taxation, but I'm like, well, why should I obey that law? Like they're not obeying, like, it's almost like, is the contract void now? Because that's the way we're acting. Right. So do I need to pay taxes if they're now I'm not advocating not paying taxes, but I'm just looking at this and I'm like, this is just a big mess. Like, does this even mean anything anymore? Like, well, see, that's the thing. You know, I, I look at the 10th Amendment, and the 10th Amendment has been literally written out. Like, the 10th Amendment says anything that's not listed in the Bill of Rights, basically, and the Constitution, the, anything that's not in there is left up to the states and to the people. But that's the limit of the federal government. So the reverse of that, 
is true. That means if it's in the Constitution, it belongs to the federal government and states and the people can't change it. Yeah. Unless, of course, they get an amendment. So what does that mean? That means the FDA is unconstitutional. Exactly. Because the Constitution doesn't give the government, the federal government, rights to do anything with drugs or anything like yeah. that. That's unconstitutional. Yeah. That means every single state law that has to do with guns, community laws, city laws, those are all unconstitutional because the Constitution does give the, per, the mm-hmm. right to the people. And that means no one can take it away. Like no exactly one can, right. like even... Even states that say, oh, uh, you know, we're, we're 2A friendly. We put it into our constitution. Well, that's technically unconstitutional because the 10th Amendment says that belongs to the federal government, not to you. Yeah. So, I mean, but we've completely written that. I mean, think about everything that we've got that the federal government has now that's technically unconstitutional according to the 10th Amendment. Yeah. You know, the FDA, the DEA, um, I mean, Drug Enforcement Agency, right? I mean, that one right there, uh, the 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 war on marijuana, the war on cocaine, the war on drugs is technically unconstitutional. Yeah. And no one likes to hear that, but technically it is. It is. Oh, it is. It's totally unconstitutional. I, I keep coming back to like, if we look at even like scripture where people are like, sure, why, you know, and then, you know, shouldn't we look at the Bible for, as our frame of reference? And I do believe that. Right. Then I look at, I'm like, there's nothing in there to tell me I'm not allowed to put certain things into my body, <laughs> right? Like there's plenty of recommendations against sure. like getting drunk or whatever, but I'm like, I, man, I think we are making up egregious laws to cause problems for right. people. Um, and that's, that's where we're at right now. And um, it is frustrating. I, I really mean it. Like people think, Oh man, you're just being a troublemaker, Dan. Can't you just get on board with it? I'm like, no, no, no. Like I'm really looking at this ethically and, and philosophically, theologically, I don't see a system in which I can accurately obey what is supposed to be my governing authority because it's in contradiction against itself. And so I really am confused. Like, how do I proceed as a free American or maybe not free American? How do I proceed as a good citizen when everything's contradicting itself that I'm supposed to be obeying? Even down to like tiny laws, like In Ohio, you're not allowed to buy less than six chickens at a time. I know. Um, But in our chickens or. or Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, live chickens. But in our city, you're not allowed to have more than four. So no matter what, you're screwed. Like you can't obey both laws. And I'm like, it's this kind of stuff that's just stupid. Just, I'm just just stupid. (laughs) I'm just mad about it. So, yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. You know, it's funny because. Like uh, people have asked me about my views on marijuana and I'll always preface it by saying this. You got to understand that I've actually, of all the things I've done in my life, I've never once done marijuana. I've never been high. I have no idea what that feels like. And for me, it was funny because all my friends in college did, even though I went to a Christian school, like that never happens there. Whatever, dude, (laughs) all my friends (laughs) smoked out all the time. And I used to tell them, I go, look, if it was legal, I'd do it. Like that was my, my mindset. I was like, well, yeah. if it's illegal, I'm not going to do it. And uh, I mean, there, I think there's better reasons not to do it, but it was really funny because when it became legal here in California a few years back, I remember talking to my one buddy because I used to tell him that all the time. I was like, look, if it was ever legal in California, I'd do it. And finally it was legal and he calls me up. And he's like, hey, it's legal in California. I go, dude, I'm 40 years old. What do I need to go get high for? Yeah. Like, <laughs> just, I don't need that in my life. <laughs> but but here's my point to like Christians who bring that argument up. I go, you know, oh, it's illegal. It's bad. And I'm going, look, I agree that anything could be used uh, poorly. But are you seriously telling me that God had no idea what he was doing when yeah. he made the marijuana plant? Like, you don't yeah. think that possibly he created it going, you know, this thing can actually really help these guys. I mean, in a lot of ways, some of them get cancer and this is going to give them back their appetite. They got pain. This thing. I mean, are you seriously telling me that God had like no concept and he just, oh, how'd that happen? How did I make that plant? Yeah. And it's a weed that just literally they can't exterminate. It's going to be all over the planet. I mean, come on, man. Yeah, man. I'm with you. Yeah. Totally with you. That's why it all comes back to like they're taking freedoms about random things. And even if I'm like, Hey, it's not a great idea to be smoking this recreationally. I don't want a law against it. And man, 
it's just an example of the way freedom is being eroded everywhere. Yeah. And um, it's just crazy times. So, hey, I'm glad, though, to hear about some maybe tiny progress related to freedom there. And especially with your triggers, man. Um, right. Small Triggers small make a big wins. difference. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like from I actually, that was the one thing that I understood, right? Because I'm like, well, dude, you know, if someone takes a five and a half pound trigger and puts in a two and a half pound trigger. I mean, maybe they accidentally shoot someone. I was like, I actually understand that one and their reasoning behind it. But I prefer their stance of you're an adult. You're responsible for your actions. Mm -hmm. One day, if you have to use your firearm, you're going to have to justify any modifications that you make. Yep. Yep. And honestly, I wouldn't have a problem justifying any modifications that I have yep. because every modification I've ever made to any firearm has been to make me more accurate uh, mm -hmm. or usually quicker. Yeah. And Which you is want safer. to be more accurate and quicker at the same mm -hmm. time. That's exactly right, man. 100% with you. I'm actually really excited about you being able to change the trigger. That people don't realize what a difference a softer trigger makes for your accuracy. Um, and man, once you've experienced that, once you've put a really nice trigger in a gun and you're like, I mean, technically the gun didn't get any better. It just made it easier for you to exactly. not mess it up when you're pulling the trigger. But it's one more way that you just bring the edge up and get a little bit better. And actually for, for concealed carry defense, to me, that's, that's critical. This is a wonderful thing. So it's good stuff. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the final thing that I just wanted to, to touch on in this particular podcast, I know we've gone kind of long guys, but That's uh, right. so Dan and I talked about this a couple of months ago. There was a case uh, where a guy basically oh, uh, had a ghost gun shop and like you would go in there and you would press the button on the, the CNC machine and you would make your own AR-15. <laughs> the ATF, you know, they, they sent a couple of their, their, their spies in there, you know, he made some, or, you know, they press the button. Right. So anyway, they go after this guy. He, he has the balls and the, the ingenuity to say, all right, we want a bench trial, no jury, <laughs> because I want a judge to actually look at what the law says. And the law oh. basically says what it takes to classify as a, uh, a firearm and what a receiver is. And we've actually got that right here. So the receiver <laughs> is the part of the firearm which provides the housing for the hammer, bolt or breech lock, and firing mechanism, and which is usually threaded at its forward portion to receive the barrel. Is an AR-15 lower, does it fit that? It does not. It does not. It does not have a threaded uh, portion at the front to receive the barrel. That's what the upper has. Mm -hmm. It does not hold the bolt. So that's what the upper does. So technically, both the upper and the lower do not fit under the guidelines of yep. what the law actually says. Mm -hmm. So this guy uses that. The judge takes a year to render his decision and they're, you know, the state of California is like, there's no way the judge is going to go with this. And the judge basically comes back and goes, dude, he's right. It does not fit what the law says. And just because ATF, you have been doing things incorrectly for 50 years <laughs> does not give you the right to keep doing it. You can't use your incorrect positioning as justification for doing it incorrectly. Yeah. So basically the, the state, you know, quickly went back to the guy and said, Hey, look, how about this? We're, we're going to give you a deal. No prison time. Uh, you're still going to plead guilty or something like that. You'll get no prison time. You'll be on parole for a year. And I'll, let me tell you, I've got friends who have gone to jail and I've got friends uh, who know people who've gone to jail for firearms. You will go to jail. You'll be in there for a long time. It's going to yeah. suck. I understand he took the deal, right? Because he's like, all I got to do is keep my nose clean for a year and I'm home free and I never have to go to jail. I get that he did that. Do I wish he had the balls to keep rolling with it and just say, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this to the limit. We're going to wait for the judge's final decree to come down because it was like a preliminary whatever. Basically, the judge was giving the prosecution, you know, hey, you guys better make a deal because you're going to lose. So I understand why it all went down the way that it did. However, here's what's now happening. The news is out 
and mm-hmm. cases all across America. <laughs> they're using that and going like there's uh, there's one where uh, this this guy basically is accused of uh, he was a felon and he bought a bunch of lowers and all this stuff. And they're like, no, these aren't firearms, according to the definition set out by mm-hmm. Congress. It's not it's not a firearm. <laughs> Technically, my AR-15 is not a firearm. Technically, our AR-15s it. are not because there's no one single part that fits that description. You know what? We need we need to come up with a definition for what our AR-15s are. Like, we will call them something else, like they're magical unicorns or something like that. <laughs> like, because they're not firearms. It's legally. my freedom unicorn. It's my freedom unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't fit. It's not a firearm according to the yeah. ATF def or not the, the ATF's definition, according to Congress's definition, because they're the ones who gave it. And apparently the ATF has never tried to, uh, to change it. In fact, there was a, I, the first article I read on this, this over the weekend, it's a former ATF agent who, you know, worked for the ATF for, uh, I think like 30 years wow. and 20 years ago, he went to them and said, you guys realize that we are not actually following Man. The law, when we're talking about AR-15s, maybe even, I don't know about an AK-47. I don't, I don't know. AK, yeah, that's I, I gotta, I got to think that one through. Yeah. but Because, um, I mean, it does have a separate lower. But anyway, so yeah. he's been called on to be a, a, a witness in many uh, trials. That's awesome. And he basically he just boldface says, it. no, that's not technically a firearm according to the definition. This is what the definition says. It does not have it ha- does not have those parts. Therefore, it is not a firearm. And people are getting off. That is awesome. And of course, you know, you know, California. They went to our, our attorney general. Went to the Congress. Sent a letter to him. Said, "Hey, you guys need to fix this. Congress hasn't fixed it yet." And I'm sure as more and more cases keep coming up, they're going to fix it. But you know, I kind of want them to not fix it. Mm-hmm. That's my own personal hope. <laughs> yeah. This is good news, man, because we're turning the legality uh, against them, and I love it. Um, it's a wonderful thing, man. Let's keep watching this because this, this is – I was – I'm a little bit surprised. I shouldn't say – I'm not surprised, but um, we're getting some traction out of that, and I think I'm, I'm a little bit surprised at that. I, I, was, a, I was thinking somebody's going to change the law. Something's going to – somebody's going to do something that this guy will be the only guy that gets to use that defense, but – it's so obviously some precedence has been set, man. It's working. So that's exciting. Let's hope it keeps working. Well, I, it's exciting, not just because of the precedence, but because like you have to actually look at what the law says and the law is very clear, right? What do we say here? Uh, housing for the hammer. Okay. The, the lower has that bolt or breech lock. No, it does not have. Mm-hmm. That's the upper. Yep. Uh, firing mechanism. Sure. It does have that. And threaded. Nope, it's not threaded. It's got yep. two of the four. <laughs> so two out of four, man. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. It doesn't yeah. have it. It doesn't meet the requirements. <laughs> but if the evidence doesn't fit, you <laughs> must acquit. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what a what a beautiful time. Oh, I'm loving it, man. This is good. Yeah. yeah. So um actually, Freedom Nation, let's put out the word. If you come across any um any of these kind of cases happening around you, let us know about it. We'd like to talk about it. We'll be watching the news as best we can, but um give, give us give us whatever you find out. We we want to hear. Um and if you're if any of you guys are uh in trouble for anything and you use this defense, let's let's hear about it. We want to know. We'll, we'll actually dude, we'll we'll live stream from your Heck, trial. Man. We'll, we'll do I some would podcasts. show up for that. I would exactly. show up at the trial for that. It's good stuff, man. Um yeah. hey, and a special shout out. I um I'm always thankful when I'm talking to a law enforcement person who is making real significant effort to not influence or uh, let's say this, say this the right way without getting anybody in trouble to, to not enforce unconstitutional gun laws. And I've been having some conversations with some people in law enforcement. I've, I know at times I'm a little not nice to them because I'm like, Hey guys, you guys, you guys are enforcing laws that you shouldn't be enforcing. You suck. Um, but I'm, I'm hearing about a few guys that are really making some effort to stand for some freedom. And I just wanted to say, thanks. Appreciate that. You guys, um, hopefully you'll be standing with us in the big ice shelter as well. Um, lest you be yeeted, <laughs> but glad to have you with us. Appreciate you guys. And, um, it's good stuff. Um, you want me to give our last final plug here? Go Pete? for it. 
Absolutely. Uh, you guys I want to tell you, as always, Lake Erie Arms uh, always gives us some special love uh, all the time on guns. And so thank you guys. I want to thank you for supporting Lake Erie Arms. A lot of the Freedom Nation has been doing that. I'm hearing about it. So keep it up. It helps us out, helps Lake Erie Arms out. Um, if you are, whether you're in the area or not, check out learms.net. We've got free stuff on there, free downloads, all kinds of stuff that's valuable to you as a freedom-loving gun owner or maybe soon-to-be gun owner. learms.net, check it out. But if you are in town, or if you're in proximity here in Northeast Ohio, uh, we are soon going to be coming into warm weather, which means we get into event season. Uh, we do a once a month event as soon as the weather is nice enough. And um, we feature everything from concealed carry guns to hunting guns to whatever. And it's try before you buy. You come out, you get free food, uh, you get free shooting, you get to try out some guns, and then we have amazing deals. So hopefully we'll see you at one of those. Check out learms.net and we will see you there. All right, guys, we'll be back next week with another episode. Take care, everybody. Take care. You've been listening to the From Concealment Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Be sure to tune in next week for more gun talk. Also, check out the From Concealment website for more shooting-related goodness at fromconcealment.com.